Sutra. He says, "As I now examine to the end of this life, I find the same holds true. In fact, I have never seen Bodhi. So how can there be such a thing as the attainment of Bodhi? You should now realize that there is no cause for the existence of any phenomena." Commentary. This person is able to see the events that occur within eighty thousand great eons. So he says, "As I now examine to the end of this life, the life of this physical body, I find the same holds true. Just like the living beings that he received, he perceives within eighty thousand great eons, his body also has no source from which it comes." He says, "In fact." I have never seen body. I have yet to see what body looks like. So, how can there be such a thing as the attainment of body? I've looked throughout the eighty thousand great eons and haven't even caught a glimpse of body. So, why should I believe that it is possible to attain body? You should now realize that there is no cause for. The existence of any phenomena, for no reason whatsoever, they come into being. Actually, he can only see within the range of eighty thousand great ends, and he has no idea of what occurs beyond that period of time. When the Buddha was in the world, an old man came to the monastery wishing to leave the home life. The Buddha was away on the road and not at the monastery. The hearts at there all took a look at the old man, who was probably over eighty years old, with wrinkled skin, white hair, and an unsteady gait. Whenever a person requested to leave the home life, the hearts would look into his past causes and future effects. Now they contemplated the old man's causes and found that in the past eighty. Eighty thousand ends. He did not plant a single good root. He had not done any good deeds. The great Arhat said, "Since you didn't plant any good roots, you can't not you cannot leave the home life. You shouldn't think leaving home is so easy. To leave home, you have to plant good roots for body in life after life." So the Arhat told the old man. Although you wish to leave the home life now, since you don't have any good roots, we can't allow you to leave home. You'd better go. When the old man heard that, he began to cry. He began to weep as he thought about his unlucky fate. At such an advanced age, he had wished to leave the home life and had been rejected by the Buddha's disciples. As he walked along, crying, he thought, "I might as well commit suicide. I could hang myself or throw myself into the river. I don't want to live any more." However, his one thought of sincerity evoked a response. The Buddha came back and asked, "What are you crying for?" He said, "I wanted to leave the home life, but the Buddha wasn't at the monastery and..." The Buddha's disciples wouldn't allow me to leave home. They said that I hadn't planted any good roots or done any good deeds in the last eighty thousand great ends. That's why I think I'd better, I'd be better off dead. There's no point in living. The Buddha said, "Don't cry any more. I will help you. I will let you leave the home life. Come with me to the monastery." First, the old man returned to the monastery and led the home life under the Buddha. All of the Buddha's disciples were perplexed. Strange! The Buddha accepts only those who have good roots. Why did the Buddha accept that old man who didn't have any good roots? The disciples wondered. The Buddha told them, "You arhats can only see the events that occur." Within eighty thousand great ends, you didn't know what come, what goes on beyond this period. More than eighty thousand great ends ago, this old man was a woodcutter in the mountains. 
One day he saw a tiger and climbed up a tree to save himself. The tiger started gnawing at the tree, intending to devour the man. When it had just about trooped through the tree, the man got so nervous that he cried out, Namo Buddha. The tiger immediately left. When it had gone far away, the man climbed down from the tree and went home and saved from being eaten by the tiger. His one recitation of Namo Buddha planted the seed for a good root more than 80,000 years ago. It is now time for that seed to sprout and bear fruit. That's why he is now able to live the home life. The Buddha's explanation resolved his disciples' doubts. The cultivator of somebody says there is no cause for the existence of anything because he is unaware of the events occurring beyond the period of 80,000 great ends. Sutra Because of this spectacle, uh, speculation, he will lose proper and pervasive knowledge falling through externalism and become confused about the body nature commentary. Because of this speculation, he will lose proper and pervasive knowledge and views falling through externalism and become confused about the body nature. He will not understand the body nature. So try, this is the first external teaching which postulates the absence of cause. Commentary, it maintains that there is no original cause for anything. Sutra, Ananda, in his practice of Samadhi, the good person's mind is unmoving, clear and proper and can no longer be disturbed by demons. He can thoroughly investigate the origin of all categories of beings and contemplate the source of the subtle, fleeting and constant fluctuation. But if he begins to speculate on its pervasive constancy, he could fall into error with four theories of pervasive permanence. Commentary Ananda, in his practice of Samadhi, the good person's mind is unmoving, clear and proper. His proper mind has the wisdom that develops from Samadhi and it can no longer be disturbed by demons. By now, the demon kings can no longer use their tricks to disturb his Samadhi. But sometimes transformations happen in his own formation standard, causing him to have wrong ideas. These are known as demons of one's own mind. He can thoroughly investigate the origin of all categories of beings and contemplate the source of the subtle, fleeting and constant fluctuation. He examines the ephemeral and elusive origin of all beings and finds a subtle movement, a constant uh, vibration. If, but if he begins to speculate on his pervasive constancy, that subtle fluctuation, he could find through error with four theories of pervasive permanence. This person could give rise to wrong speculations and be ensnared in the views of pervasive permanence. What are the four theories? Sutra. First, as this person thoroughly investigates the mind and its stakes, he may conclude that both are costless. Through his contemplation, he knows that in 20,000 ends, as beings in the generations undergo under this browser of birth and death, they are never annihilated. Therefore, he speculates that the mind and its days are permanent. Commentary. First, as this person thoroughly investigates the nature of the mind and its states, he may come up with a wrong view and conclude that both are costless. There is no source from which they spring. Through his cultivation, he knows that in 20,000 ends, 
as beings in the ten directions undergo endless rounds of birth and death. They are never annihilated. Through the cultivation of samadhi, he becomes aware of the production and destruction of all living beings within 20,000 ends. He sees them going through the endless cycle, being born and dying over and over, yet they are never annihilated. Therefore, he speculates that the mind and its space are permanent and will never change. Sutra Second, as this person thoroughly investigates the source of the four elements, he may conclude that they are permanent in nature. Through his cultivation, he knows that in 40,000 ends, as living beings in the ten directions undergo birth and death, their substances exist permanently and are never annihilated. Therefore, he speculates that this situation is permanent. Commentary What is the second theory? As this person thoroughly investigates the source of the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, he may conclude that they are permanent in nature. They claim the natures of earth, water, fire, and air are permanent and indestructible. Actually, earth, well, water, fire, and air are created from the four stars of living beings and have no substance at all. Without any substance, how can they be permanent? That is a misconception. Through his cultivation, he knows that in 40,000 ends as living beings in the ten directions undergo births and deaths. Their substances exist permanently and are never annihilated. Therefore, he speculates that this situation is permanent. He says that the nature of their births and deaths is permanent and unchanging. It has never been interrupted. That is the second theory. Sutra third. As this person thoroughly investigates the sixth sense faculty, the manas and the consciousness that grasp and receives, he concludes that the origin of mind, intellect, and consciousness of is permanent. Through his cultivation, he knows that in 80,000 ends, as all living beings in the ten directions revolve in transmigration. This origin is never destroyed and exists permanently. Investigate this destroyed origin. He speculates that it is permanent. Commentary Third, as this person thoroughly investigates the sixth sense faculty, the sixth mind consciousness, the manas consciousness, which was previously called the divine consciousness, and the consciousness that grasps and receives, he concludes that the origin of mind, intellect, and consciousness of the sixth, seventh consciousnesses is fundamental, permanent. Through his cultivation of the skill of directing the hearing inward to listen to the inherent nature, he knows that in 80,000 ends, as all living beings in the ten directions revolve in the transmigration, undergo repeated births and deaths. This origin is never destroyed and exists permanently and without change. Investigating this undestroyed origin, he speculates that it is permanent and not subject to change. Sutra fourth, since this person has entered the source of thoughts, there is no more reason for them to arise. In the state of flowing, halting, and turning, the thinking mind, which was the cause of production and distinction, has now ceased to cover forever. Has now ceased forever, and so he naturally thinks that this is a state of non-production and non-destruction. As a result of such a reasoning, he speculates this 
that the state is permanent. Commentary fourth, since the person has entered the source of thoughts, there is no more reason for them to arise. Once he breaks through the thinking scandal, the cause for false thoughts, so arise is gone. He has somebody power over the thoughts of his mind. With the unmoving dear and proper mind, he has no opportunity to attain false thoughts. In the state of flowing, halting, and turning off the formation's standard, the thinking mind, which was the cause of production and destruction, has now existed forever. He no longer has false thoughts, and so he naturally thinks that this is a state of non-production and non-destruction. As a result of such reasoning, he speculates that this state is permanent and unchanging. Sutra, because of these speculations of permanence, he will lose proper and pervasive knowledge, fall into Islamism, and become confused about the body nature. This is the second external teaching which postulates pervasive permanence. Commentary. Because of these speculations, these four theories of pervasive permanence, he will lose the wisdom of proper and pervasive knowledge, fall into externalism, and become confused about the body nature. Once he starts following external teachings, he will not be able to understand the body nature. This is the second external teaching which postulates pervasive permanence.